You're a big fat phony! Reality really does bite sometimes, but it's necessary to stay there most of the time. Greetings, and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Don't forget, every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central Time, the Talk To Me America show where the world wants to know what you have to say. So call me and tell them like it is. Also, please give us a like, a subscribe, a comment, a share, and a donation would be the ultimate to support the channel. All my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? When I first decided to become a content creator, the first thing I did was read and watch a lot of videos on how to become a content creator. And the main thing that stood out to me foremost was uh, that no matter what you cover, no matter what you choose to talk about or do, that you needed to be genuine. People can evidently sniff out or at least claim to know when someone is online or not being genuine or real as most like to put it when they uh, someone is a grifter maybe. It is easy to confuse the two as well. Most folks will do that if a creator says something that they don't agree with but you know that reflects more on the person doing the critique than it does the creator most times anyway. I figured I can be genuine. You see me, what you see is what you get. I've never actually practiced or even tried to be someone else. Well, I have, but, and when I did, it usually didn't work out too well. That was a lesson I learned extremely early in life. So when someone acts outside of themselves or tries to be someone that they're not, they're essentially lying uh, to the world and probably most likely to themselves as well. Some might justify these lies by even calling it acting. In fact, there's even a syndrome that's called main character syndrome. It happens to actors that can't get out of a character that they've been doing for a long time, but it also seems to be affecting people on YouTube and Twitter and, and uh, uh, TikTok and all of this other stuff, and it basically manifests itself into that person's personality. That doesn't always work out for the best either, and it could actually, in my opinion, be the reason for the 100% divorce rate in Hollywood or in acting circles or uh, celebrity circles. From what I can see though, like I said before, and from my several years now of being a content creator and the networker that I've been, I believe that this is happening with social media as well. In fact, they are portraying this uh, in some of the psychological uh, circles as well that social media is doing this as well. Most everyone on social media is seeking to be famous, but in order to do that, you have to go viral for something that you've either done or said. And let's face it, most people, even the good actors and entertainers, are, they're not always on it. They're not always interesting or entertaining. In fact, a lot of them aren't very entertaining at all unless they have someone right for them. Some would even say downright boring. I know I'm very boring to watch when I read or create something, even when I sit around and uh, browse on the computer looking for fodder to share with you. You know, and of course trying to find clips and videos and writing and all that other stuff. That's boring. Nobody wants to watch that. In fact, that's the one reason why you see something like that happening in a, in a, a movie or something like that and they clip away from it after about three or four seconds. You know what he's doing, but it's a very, very long process to write a book or even an article in some cases. So no one, I can't imagine anyone wanting to watch all of that I go through to either create or just to live my life. Well, except for the government maybe. But I bet they'd probably fall asleep watching me 24 seven as well, especially the eight and a half hours to nine hours that I try to get to sleep. It's boring watching someone else sleep. But if I make my actions and creations seem like a breeze, like I have an easy and privileged life,
then most folks will watch it and most will believe that it is all just that easy for me to do and then for them to do too. Until of course they choose to actually do the same things themselves. Let me tell you, there isn't an almost endless page of nailed it pin interest fail compilations uh, because everyone is magically delicious when they endeavor a new skill seen only on an elapsed time two minute video on TikTok or other social media. Hence the cliche that you only get 15 minutes of fame, if you're lucky. But it also makes people do things and act out of their own original character in order to obtain that 15 minutes and try to beat that odd as well. And when their character cells get all the attention, what would be the first thing that you would do? Especially if it made money as well. Try to turn yourself into that character. Some folks have done so much so that they go as far as having life-altering surgeries and body procedures that they can never come back from. And for what? Some clicks from folks who are most likely sitting on the john while flipping through your fake selfies and proclamations while you're enduring behind the scenes torture and having viewers believing that you have a better life than they do? And the only way that you know that they've even glanced in your way is an electronic cartoon hand or heart or smiley face. Then thinking that the more Johnny clickers you get, the more attention that you will get from some sponsor that just wants you to perform to get eyeballs on their products. Have we really given ourselves up for electronic accolades and meaningless and sometimes exploitive sponsorships? No wonder everyone is angry, depressed, and in need of constant affirmation. Because the need for affirmation causes so much apprehension that even millions of electronic accolades are not a strong enough drug to keep you from absolute humiliation sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> of course, those are the ones that you know are doing their very best and trying to be genuine about this character that they've created and that gets so much attention. And because they are trying usually to mimic someone else, such as Mulvaney or even Cardi B, their plight still comes off as phony as a $3 bill. You're a big fat phony! Like the difference between Carrie Lake with reporters and Katie Hobbs being sworn in and running from reporters. We don't care what the media says. The media is full of it. You don't give a damn about our elections. You've got a narrative and you're trying to push it. People actually trust this phony? Now, we all know that one person that everyone seems to be talking about the most, especially after they tried and are continuing to try to convince people of the things that this person is not and will never be. You know, things like a woman and a beer drinker? Let's just say this person is good at grabbing the algorithms of social media platforms. But then, the brick and mortar and older companies that want to make sure to keep up with the times mistakenly conflated real life with the internet and their advertising started showing that fact. Now these companies can't figure out why their sales are plummeting. It goes to show you the two things about the phoniness and fakeness of what, is, uh, what the internet shows us about people and what really happens in real life or away from the keyboard. One, ladies are not liking being replaced and I don't think a man in drag is going to convince them to drink shitty beer or use any other product for that matter. And two, you don't do this by shitting on your loyal base while trying to attract a smaller base than your loyal base would ever have been. 
Had you left it alone, you probably would have gotten these loyal customers to pass your brands down to their kids and younger generations. And could you not have found a way to do both? But again, that just tells you that the agenda that they push about unity and such is fake also. In fact, here is a new member of the Senate from North Carolina, Jeff Jackson, who confirms what most of us knew about most of these stupid politicians up in Washington. I'm still brand new to Congress. I've only been there 100 days. And I don't know if I'm not supposed to say this out loud, but it's true and important. And if you don't know this, you need to. It's really clear from working there for just a few months that most of the really angry voices in Congress are totally faking it. These people who have built their brands around being perpetually outraged, it's an act. I've seen a bunch of examples. Here's one. I've been in committee meetings that are open to the press and committee meetings that are closed. The same people who act like maniacs during the open meetings are suddenly calm and rational during the closed ones. Why? Because there aren't any cameras in the closed meetings, so their incentives are different. What I've seen is that members of Congress are surrounded by negative incentives. There are rewards for bad behavior. You know what the big one is? Being able to reach you. The big thing that modern media and modern politicians have learned is that if they can keep you angry, they'll hold your attention and they both want your attention. So if you're a politician and you show certain media outlets that you can help them keep their audience angry, they'll give you their audience. Here's another example of the difference between real and fake. Uh, I mean, yeah. I, would, I would only just add that, you know, we have spoken to people who, who have been sacked that used to be in content moderation. And, and we've spoken to people very recently who were involved in moderation. And they just say, they just, there's not enough people to police this stuff, particularly around, um, particularly around hate speech um, in the company. Do, is that well, what hate speech you are you talking about? I mean, you use Twitter. Right. Do you see a rise in hate speech? I mean, I, I, just a personal anecdote, like what do you do? I don't. P personally, my, uh, for you, I would see I get, I get more of that kind of content, yeah, personally. But I, I'm not going talk to talk to the rest of, for, for the rest of Twitter. So you see more hate speech personally? I would say I would see more hateful content in that, in that. Content way. you don't like or, or hateful? What do you mean to describe a hateful thing? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, just content that will solicit a, a reaction, something that may include something that is slightly racist or slightly sexist, those kinds of those kinds of things. So you think if I'm, something is slightly sexist, it should be banned? I, no, is that I'm what you're saying? I'm not saying anything. I'm saying. Well, I'm just curious. What you, I'm, just, I'm trying to understand what you mean by hateful con content. And I'm asking for specific examples. Um, and if, and you just said that if something is slightly sexist. That's hateful content. Does that mean that it should be banned? Well, you've asked me. You've asked me whether my feed, whether it's got less or more. It, I'd say it's got slightly more. That's why I'm asking for examples. Can, right. you, can you name one example? I, I honestly don't. Use, I, I, honestly, you I don't. You can't name I, a single example. I'll tell you why. Because I don't actually use that for you feed anymore. Because I, I just don't particularly like it. But you and said actually, a lot of people. A lot of people are quite similar. I, I, I only. Well, well, I only look well, at hang my, on a second. My you said you've seen more hateful content, but you can't name a single example. Not even one. I'm not sure I've used that feed for the last three or four weeks, and I. Well, then I how did you see the hateful content? Content. Because I've been I've been using I've been using Twitter since you've taken it over for the last six months. Okay, so then you must have at some point seen the you for you hateful content. I'm asking for one example. Right. And, and I, you can't I, give us a single one. And, and, and I'm saying. I, 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 then I, I say so that you don't know what you're talking about. Really? Yes, because you can't give me a single example of hateful con a content, not even one tweet, and yet you claimed that the hateful content was high. Well, that's a false. No, what I claimed, you just lied. What no, no. What I claim was uh, there are many uh, organisations that say that that kind of information is on the rise. Now, whether whether it has on Give my feed or example. not, I mean, I, right? And Literally, you can, can you name something one. like the, the uh, Strategic Dialogue uh, Institute in the, U, in the UK. They will say that. So you, they, look, it's, people will say all sorts of nonsense. I'm literally asking for a right. single example, and you can't name one. Right. And as, as I've already said, I don't use that feed. But let's, then how let, would you know? No, that I don't you, think you, this is getting anywhere. You literally said you experienced more hateful content, and then couldn't name a single example. Right. And as I said, I that's absurd. I haven't. I haven't actually looked at that feed. I then how would you know this hateful weeks. content? Because I'm saying that's what I saw a few weeks ago. I can't give you an exact example. Let's move on. This is actually one viral video that I can't stop watching. And when I see it come up on my feed, I watch it over and over again. I actually watched the entire interview before I did this video, and it was actually pretty boring. Uh, except for that part and a couple of others where he explains some things. Uh, the 
Once he sets his boundaries, though, you notice that the interviewer doesn't try to push anything because, like I say, he let him have it. However, what I witnessed throughout the interview was a journalist that was so used to feeling superior because he asks all the questions, no matter how scripted, that he couldn't even believe that Elon would ask any questions of him. And when pressed, he was quick to change the subject, and he even got called out on that. So yeah, now with the advancements of the internet and now AI, it is getting harder and harder to spot phonies. But it really isn't. So when you think about just about anything you see on the internet, especially the fantastic mainstream and viral lives that the too-good-to-be-true narrative or folks that continually lecture you that folks are interchangeable into everything and anything, just keep reminding yourself that the internet is not real life and those that vie for your attention and loyalty will continue to pursue your mind until you believe what you see on the internet is real and start acting accordingly. I think for some folks though, it's already too late. I do hope you enjoyed my video today. Don't forget, every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central Time, the Talk To Me America show where the world wants to know what you have to say. So call me and tell them like it is. Also, please give us a like, a subscribe, a comment, a share, and a donation would be the ultimate to support the channel. All my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? I do appreciate you being here, and thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time... AMF! <laughs>